So the patient appears healthy and no apparent distress, or you can say that the patient appears ill if he did. He doesn't. So now our general inspection, we're inspecting for symmetry of the anatomy. So I'm inspecting the chest wall is all I'm doing at this point, right? This is my anterior chest wall view. We talked about the AP diameter, right? He should be twice as wide here as he is this way, right? So AP diameter we're looking at. We're looking for any skin lesions on him as well. Uh, we're looking for, again, central cyanosis, any superficial veins or anything like that, okay? So where do I look for central cyanosis? Uh, right, so when I'm looking at it, I'm just looking at the general, you know, the general uh, look at my patient. It's his, are there, his lips nice and pink, right? You can see the fingers this way. And, you know, the two seconds, the cap refill, there should be any purple or discoloration here, right? So we're looking at that as well. When we talk about expansion, we were talking about having symmetry or equality of that expansion. I'm going to be at right about T10 here, right? And I just take my thumbs that are right around the tip inner space, and I just clap some skin. See, I got a single little full. Now take a deep breath in, and then let it out. See how my hands moved symmetrically together? That's what I'm looking for. One more time. So I'm not moving my hands. It's actually the expansion of his chest wall that moves my hands. You've got to take a little skin when you do it. Uh, and again, it's right about the tenth inner space, right, intercostal space. Okay? So there I would say that uh, chest expands symmetrically. The posterior respiratory, all this needs to be done with the patient's arms crossed from here forward. So a lot of people say, oh, why don't you hug yourself today? You deserve it after that exam. <laughs> right? So what it does is it displaces the scapula laterally, and in theory, it opens up a little bit more of the, the lung fields for us to auscultate, uh, for cuss and all those things. I've noticed that um, there's no deformities, no step bulbs or cre crepitus as I palpate, so I've inspected, and just looking at the posterior wall, I'm just kind of palpating the spinous process, most certainly the ribs, the scapula, right? So there's no step offs, uh, crepitus or masses or tenderness noted, Tactile foramenus, we're going to do in four paired regions, right? So four paired, we're going to have our patient say 99. Every time you feel my hands touch you, just uh, say 99. 99. Notice I started at the apex, right? 99. 99. 99. Right? Four paired places. One, two, three, four. Right? So once I get that done, I say that tactile foramenus is equal in all fields. An abnormality, if you do it today, you're gonna to notice there is firmitus. That is a normal variant. We should find we should find firmitus. It should be kind of mild. We wanna just compare, right? We're comparing sides. Greater firmitus on one side than the other should be investigated for some kind of consolidation. Now we're gonna talk about diaphragmatic excursion. You're gonna need your little centimeter ruler. And this is the one that everyone's having a little issues with, right, or will. But don't worry, practice makes perfect. So my patient is breathing normal at this point. I'm gonna percuss. This is resonant. Hear this stuff? Resonance, okay? Dullness. Different note, yes? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start percussing down on my diaphragmatic excursion. This should be resonant. It's definitely dull there, okay? So this is my starting point. Now, I want you to take a big breath in and hold it. Hold it. Now, where did my diaphragm go? Okay, you wouldn't breathe. So this will be my starting point. We used to have you guys mark on each other, but Dr. Abai said, let's get away with the pen. That's fine, let's do. So just use a body mark, right? My landmark. You got a scratch mark. <laughs> so that's going to be my starting point. Now, my next instruction, after I've given him a little break, I'm going to have him take a deep breath in and exhale completely and hold it. Where'd my diaphragm go? Uh -huh. Up. So. Right here is my transition. So it'll be, okay, you can breathe. So this is where I changed again from now dull to resonant. This is my distance here, and I'm gonna measure in centimeters. 
and he's about five and a half centimeters. Okay, from this point to this point, right at five and a half centimeters. All right, good. I will repeat that on the other side. It is a bilateral exam, right? Both sides, five and a half. Now, percussion, we're gonna percuss in seven paired areas, right? Seven paired areas. It starts in apex. Remember the ladder? We'll talk about doing the ladder maneuver. So here, left, I drop down. This is number three. Anything less than T10 is not going to be long anymore unless he just happens to have just a massive long thorax, right? So that's five. Then I'm going to come over here. Come here. Seven. Okay. So after I complete that, I'm going to say that there's no dullness to percussion. If you notice number 11 there, it says no CVA tenderness noted bilaterally. CBA tenderness is really a part of the abdominal exam, but since we have our patient up and the abdominal exam is all laying down, we're gonna go ahead and test it back here. It is a way to go about uh, distinguishing inflammation in the renal capsule, right? Any kind of infections can cause that bleeding or anything like that in the kidney or the capsule itself. So it's a matter of taking your hand, is that tender? No. So it's just right over where the kidneys are. I don't really always block with my hand. I just kind of, I'm not going to crush anybody with, you know, hit them like this gentle. That's all it takes is a gentle punch, right? CVA tendinitis, costovertebral angle tendinitis, right? Sign of renal and, uh, inflammation of some kind. So no CVA tendinitis noted bilaterally. Right into auscultation, right? So auscultation are in the same seven paired regions that we did with percussion. Exact same, right? So we're going to have our pre patient breathe through his mouth. It needs to be an open mouth, right? Not through the nose, but an open mouth. We're going to listen for the full resp uh, respiratory cycle, both inspiration and expiration, right? Not just inspiration. Um, and we're going to use the diaphragm for sure. Make sure we got a complete contact on the skin is very important. Um, and we should hear no vesicular, or excuse me, no uh, adventitious sounds. Remember the adventitious sounds or the extra sounds? The ronchi, the rowels. Crackles and wheezing. Okay. Pulmonary rods. Okay. So every time you feel my stethoscope touch, I want you to take a deep breath. Okay. Big breath. There is no adventitious sounds heard, or you can say that uh, lung sounds are equal bilaterally, but no adventitious sounds. Um, now we're gonna palpate the four walls of the axilla. I didn't show you guys this. This is, um, because it's upper thorax, I wanna show you this maneuver. It's kind of, it's kind of interesting. It definitely won't wear some gloves. I have my patient take their arm and rest it on my shoulder, right? Remember we talked about the axillary lines, right? We had the mid axillary, the anterior axillary and the posterior axillary. And then we also have the lateral chain of lymph nodes that come out off the arm this way. And then there's an epitrochlear lymph node. Okay, it's actually it's on this side. So to palpate these lymph nodes, I have to take my hand and place it into the axilla. And I take the pectoralis major out front and I kind of squeeze them together as I'm trying to palpate the chain, which would be here, of lymph nodes. Right? So I'm palpating right about to T4, right? So that's my anterior. On this one, I apply pressure into the axilla, applying pressure down. 
that is my mid axillary chain. I have posterior. Notice how my hand now grabs the serratus, and then my right hand is my examining hand. And again, I'm using my fingertips right about to T4 to here. The chain doesn't really descend much further than that. Then I have my lateral chain, right? And it comes right out underneath the biceps. And then I just kind of flex the arm, bend your arm a little bit, and then there's the epitrochlear, which lies here, my epitrochlear node, right? And that's done by lateral. There's no lymphadenopathy in the anterior, posterior, lateral, or central nodes. Okay. So at this point, we're going to do the superior portion. Remember, I told you that most of your patients you can do uh, seated, upright, anterior, and posterior. But we, all, but we do need to know how to do a posterior just in case our patient is in supine position and can't sit up right. Right. So I change my bed position. Um, so. We're going to do the same thing all over again. We're going to um, start. I'm going to go ahead and have you lay back for me. I'm going to bring out my leg rests. Okay. Comfortable? All good. So, first thing we're going to do, of course, is inspection once again. I'm just inspecting everything anteriorly. We we'd already looked at it initially, but real quick, I'm going over it one more time. And then we're going to palpate the anterior chest wall. We're going to look for masses, crepitus, tenderness. All right, so we're going to palpate, simple as this. Remember I was talking about the balls of my hands, right, the palms, right? Any of that tender in there? Nothing, nothing. So the anterior chest hole is it without masses, crepitus or tenderness. Um, ask the patient to say 99 when we do the tactile firmness again. Once again, we're going to go up into apices. 99, 99, 99. And then this one? 99. 99. So firmness is equal in all fields. And then we're going to percuss in six paired areas, and I'll show you how we're going to modify it for our female students, right? So here we go percussing. And what sound should this be? What about over here on the left, fourth and fifth intercostal space? It'd be cause the, heart. the heart's over here, right? So it's going to be a little dull here. And I'm also going to find a little dullness on this side. This is liver. liver. There's a liver in here, right? So dullness, resonance. Right, resonant, a little dull. You can hear the difference, right? Okay, no dullness to percussion. And then once again, we're gonna have the patient breathe through an open mouth and we're gonna listen for the full respiratory cycle with each placement of the stethoscope. Change this to the dive or the bell at this point because remember the apices are up in this really tiny triangle, right? So we'll go to the, the bell for this one. Deep breath. Good. Good. Turn it back on the diaphragm. Good. one. So six paired areas in the male patient and I'll show you, we're going to show the uh, female in just a second. So breath sounds are vesicular and symmetric or you can say no adventitious breath sounds were heard. Okay. So at this point is when we perform a special test if we had something going on. So if there were adventitious sounds, the crackles, the ronchi, the rowels, the wheezing, then we would perform one of these special tests. So I'm going to show you how that works. I'm going to listen while the patient um, says the word E, right? Yep, I want you to say E. So I'm going to place my stethoscope over his chest. E, 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 E. If it was positive, he would have had a transition from E to an obvious A. What I hear when he does that is like a brah, brah, <laughs> and okay? The other one is uh, bronchophony, um, and I'll do this one on the front. These can be done on anterior or posterior walls, it doesn't matter. So this is my 
where I have him say 99, right? If it becomes clear, it's a positive finding, okay? 99, 99, 99, 99, 99, 99. And then we go through all my, my areas. So again, a negative finding goes no, 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 no. That's what he said. <laughs> Last one, whispered pectroliquy, right? That's where we have him whisper one, two, three. Now as he whispers one, two, three, I should barely be able to hear it, but I definitely should not be able to discern it's one, two, three, right? It should still be muffled. Okay, we'll do it to you again, go. So as I go through, again, it's muffled. You can't really understand what's being said. That's a, that is a negative special test uh, for the respiratory system. Well, our patient here, right? you don't have to take the breath, so I just want to show where we're going to place things. So the apices, I'm underneath, right? I'll just slip right up underneath the strap, right? Slip right up underneath, right? So there's one, two, three, Four, T10. <laughs> Four, five, five. She's hugging herself. And then this one, you can come right down on the top. I don't mean to pinch it out, but pinch it out. But just sit this right on top. Right? Just on top. Just like that. Okay? That's it? Yes. Four, and then the two here. This one goes underneath. This one goes on top. Underneath. Right? That's. That's uh, the right placement, it's about right there. Okay, this is our location here, right? So again, the bell up in the apices, way up high, supraclavicularly. So there's one, here is two, two, three we're skipping, four, sits right up under there, that's all, four, right up under there, four, five, right, five's here, Five is here, and then six would be right here. Right, six, and then six on this side. All right, that's it. Same thing with tactile primitives. One is up high, with the apices. One, two, and three. <laughs>